The Lord be with you. Welcome to our service from St John's this week, whether you're local or tuning in from further afield, whether this is your first time with us or whether you are a regular. Welcome. Now, the reason I'm standing in this unusual place in the church is to show you this window that we have here because today is Trinity Sunday and this is our Trinity window which helps us to remember that God is Father, Son and Holy Spirit but one God. joining us this morning to help us understand better this great mystery at the centre of our faith, the mystery of the Trinity, how God can be three persons, yet one God, is Bishop Stephen Venner. It's a great pleasure to have Bishop Stephen with us and he's well known to us here at St John's. So in advance, Bishop Stephen, thank you for your words that you will share with us today. So we're going to start our service by singing together that great hymn, Thou whose almighty word, which speaks of God's boundless wisdom, power and love for us. Holy, holy, holy is the Lord God Almighty. We long for the fire of God's cleansing to touch our unclean lips, for our guilt to be removed and our sin wiped out. So we meet Father, Son and Holy Spirit with repentance in our hearts. We have not always worshipped God, our Creator. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. We have not always followed Christ, our Saviour. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. We have not always trusted in the Spirit as our guide. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. The Almighty and merciful Lord, grant you pardon and forgiveness of all your sins, time for a moment of life, and the grace and comfort of the Holy Spirit. Amen. A reading from the second letter to the Corinthians. Finally, brothers and sisters, farewell. Put things in order. Listen to my appeal. Agree with one another, live in peace, and the God of love and peace will be with you. 
greet one another with a holy kiss. All the saints greet you. The grace of the Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with all of you. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. A reading from the Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ, according to Matthew. Glory, Glory to, to you, you, O Lord. O Lord. Now the eleven disciples went to Galilee, to the mountain to which Jesus had directed them. When they saw him, they worshipped him, but some doubted. And Jesus came and said to them, All authority in heaven and on earth has been given to me. Go therefore and make disciples of all nations, baptising them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit and teaching them to obey everything that I have commanded you. And remember, I am with you always to the end of the age. This is the Gospel of the Lord. Praise, Praise to, to you, you O Christ. Christ. May I speak and may you hear in the name of the one God, who is Father, Son and Holy Spirit. Amen. Isn't it odd? Normally I'd say, how lovely to be back and to see you all again. But it's the one thing that I can't do. You can see me, but I can't see you. And it makes everything very different. So we're all having to learn new skills. I'm having to learn how to preach to a camera uh, and to dream of you folk sitting at home or wherever you are watching this, perhaps at the same time, perhaps later. But we're all learning new forms of communication, whether it's Zoom and Skype and FaceTime in order to keep track of the wider family or to keep in touch or to have virtual meetings. But we're also having to learn to speak differently, to communicate differently. And the government itself and many organisations have discovered that although they want their message to be simple, getting the message across in a way that is understood is particularly difficult. We're in June now and the cricket season ought to be underway so I thought I'd start just with the example of cricket because you talk to most people in this country let alone abroad and they haven't a clue what cricket is all about. So Brian Johnston whom the older ones amongst you will remember wrote a very simple explanation of the game and this is what he said. It's quite simple, you have two sides, one goes out in the field and one in. Each man on the side that is in goes out and when he's out he comes in and the next man goes in till he's out. When they're all out the side that's out in the field comes in and the side that, be, that has been in goes out and tries to get out those coming in. Sometimes you get men still in and not out. And then when both sides have been in and out, including not outs, that's the end of the game. Now you understand. And of course you don't. The words are very simple, but are just as confusing as the game itself. And today we celebrate the Feast of the Holy Trinity, which sounds in some ways quite simple when we sing about it, three in one and one in three, until you start thinking about, well, what exactly does that mean? And for centuries, great minds, great theologians have literally fought each other over the meaning of what the Holy Trinity is all about. And if you want to be confused by the Holy Trinity, then open your Book of Common Prayer and look at the Athanasian Creed, or just read any of the dozens of little books that there are about the nature of God. But I just want to share with you somebody who I guess many of you won't know about, though some of you might, called Richard of St. Victor. 
Now, he wrote in the 12th century and was a Scottish theologian, so I'm not going to quote from him, partly because my Scottish accent is rubbish. But for my money, he explained the Trinity in words that made sense for me and I hope make sense for you. What St Richard said was that in order to be love, and we all believe quite simply that God is love, God must at the very least be Trinity. Think about it. If one person loves, then the love is real, there's no taking away from it, but it doesn't go anywhere or do anything because it just goes out. It is what it is. When that love is reciprocated, when somebody realises they are loved and actually love that person back, then the love begins to come alive and they really do love each other. But that love can be quite inward looking. It can separate two people from everybody else in society, in the neighbourhood, in the family. And so St Richard says that love only becomes alive, real, active, when the love that two people have for each other overflows onto a third, onto other people. And then when two love one and another two love the one and another two love the one, the love becomes alive and active and interesting and vital and real. And that makes sense for me. I don't know whether it does for you. But it's been a theme that has gone through our teaching about the Trinity through the centuries. Perhaps the most famous icon of the Holy Trinity is this one, Rublev's icon. You can find it on Google or in most religious shops because it is an immensely famous icon. And what it shows is the three persons of the Trinity sitting round a table, but you'll notice that at the front where you are looking at it, there is an open space as if they're saying, come in, join our fellowship of love. And that's what God is all about. And that's what we thank him for today and reflect on on this feast of the Holy Trinity. So what, that's, what has that got to do with us? What has that got to do with today? Well, most of us have done quite well on the loving stakes over the last weeks, haven't we? Thousands of people in our society and around the world have risked their lives looking after others in care homes, in hospitals, in families, homes, in transport, in shops, in supermarkets, in post offices, delivering the mail, collecting the rubbish. In so many ways, people have put others before themselves, which is the essence of Christian love. And many of us who haven't been asked to do those sort of things have done our bit by keeping ourselves safe, by not risking our lives and the lives of others, by not risking being spreaders of the virus. And we've done our bit to care for our neighbours, to talk to them perhaps in ways we've never done before. And all of that is positive, all of that is wonderful, but the $64,000 question is, where is this all going? What is going to happen as the lockdown begins to take effect? There are real signs that people are beginning, quote, to get back to normal. But what is normal? What is back? And if the Christian gospel has anything to tell us, it is that back is not an option. Absolutely not. We need to hear God's wise, still voice, prophesying that if we go back, then everything that we've achieved over these last weeks will be wasted. The poorest in society will continue to be poor and to suffer greatly. Our wonderful, clear, fresh skies 
those wonderful birds that are now singing, hopefully more sounding louder than ever, will just stop. Our care services, our hospitals that we've said, nothing is too much trouble to support and encourage them, will go back to being underfunded. Charities will have to struggle to survive. Even the virus that we think that we are overcoming will rear its ugly head again. And wars and discrimination, the divide between rich and poor, will lead inevitably to a world that we wouldn't want our grandchildren to grow up in. So bishops and clergy and all Christians need now to begin to speak out. They need to be seen to act on the words of God that are there in today's lessons. Read those lessons. Agree with one another. Live in peace, says St Paul. I am with you always to the end of time, says Jesus at his ascension. God's call to us is to move forward, to ensure that out of all this trouble, out of all this hard work, out of all this tribulation, the love that we have discovered creates a new world order where we begin to take them far more seriously our own lifestyle. And so issues like what holidays are we going to take, how are we going to spend our money, how should government resources be spent, what sort of society, what sort of world do we want to live in, how do we use the earth's resources, how do we use the environment, how do we relate to the animal kingdom, to outer space, all of these exciting projects lie ahead of us. But it is lying ahead and not lying back. And so we return to the Holy Trinity. The love of God is real when the love that we have for each other and for God overflows into his creation, into our neighbourhood, into our world. And we know that we cannot lose because God promises to be with us always, even to the ends of the world, even if, at the end, cricket still remains a mystery to most of us. Amen. Loving God, open our lips to your praise and our hearts to your love. We pray for your guidance for each of us at a time of such challenge in the world. We give thanks for the beauty of your creation, for the sunshine and green spaces we are privileged to enjoy and that have sustained us in our times of isolation. Help us to respect that environment and to do what we can to live differently. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. Loving God, we don't know when we will be able to meet together in one place to worship you or what that worship will look like. We pray that we can see the opportunities this time offers to find different ways to connect with you and with each other. Help us to be sensitive to the different needs in our community and to recognise the many gifts that we have to offer. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. Loving God, we know that the world as it is includes inequality and injustice, and that is not how you want it to be. We pray for George Floyd, whose tragic death has highlighted attitudes to black people in America and elsewhere. We ask your forgiveness for those occasions on which we have not recognised our own privilege and the devaluing of others. We pray that this event will mark a turning point in our attitudes as individuals, communities and nations, and that there will be a transformation that will lead to true equality. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. Loving God, we pray for all those who are suffering during this pandemic 
either directly or indirectly. Those who are ill at home or in hospital. Those who cannot be alongside them because of restrictions. Those whose operations have been delayed. We pray that they will feel your love for them. We also remember those who have died in this past week and those who mourn them, that they may be sustained by your presence. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. And now let us join our prayers together in the prayer that Jesus taught us. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power and the glory are yours, now and for ever. Amen. Having brought our prayers to Almighty God, we now turn again to praise, recognising that boundless wisdom, love and might of our triune God as we sing the final verse of our hymn. God, the Holy Trinity, make you strong in faith and love, defend you on every side, and guide you in truth and peace, and the blessing of God Almighty, who is Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, come down upon you and remain with you now and always. Amen. Recent months, with the lockdown due to coronavirus, have put a strain on the finances of many people and businesses, and the church, unfortunately, is not immune to this either. We're relatively lucky at St John's that many of our congregation are able to give regularly by standing order. Nonetheless, we have seen a drop in our income due to the lack of loose plate collections at services and the cessation of hall hires. On top of that, our outgoings are largely unchanged because the majority of our costs are related to staffing. We've taken the measures we can do to reduce our outgoings, but our current estimate is that we will have at least a £30,000 deficit this year. I want to ask for your help. Please do keep this situation in your prayers, but also if you happen to be amongst the people in a position of being better off at the moment due to reduced spending, please consider an additional donation to the church or whether you can increase your regular giving. Details of how you can give money to St John's regularly or how you can make a one-off donation via our Just Giving page can be found in the web links of the description of this video and donations can be gift aided if you are a UK taxpayer. Thank you for your prayers and for your time. <laughs>